Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express. Uh, we're doing a series of these uh, videos which are around about 10 minutes each, uh, right through 2017. I hope you can join us for other ones in the future. Today we're going to talk about colour workflow. Now we, we touched on this when we talked about preparing photos for print, but now we're going to go a bit deeper. Colour workflow is something that most of the time works automatically or, or works well enough for you not to spot that it's wrong. But when it does go wrong, it goes very badly wrong. And without some understanding of what's behind it, uh, you'll be completely at sea. Now, these things are actually quite complicated, uh, partly because there are two concepts which have got eerily familiar titles for the different bits of them. And when you go on web articles, people writing the articles quite often mix the two up without telling you. So we're going to begin with colour space, and then we're going to look at colour profile. They're not the same thing, but they're closely related. So um, let's go to the screen. And uh, we've got here, uh, we've got the, the, the color horseshoe, uh, which uh, I hope you can see. And that is the, the visible color. Now, you've probably seen one of these diagrams before. Uh, you might have seen one with numbers on it. We, we could have that one, but it, it wouldn't make any more difference. This is, uh, the horseshoe is, is the visible space of color. And the triangles and other things are what different devices can record or even print. So um, down here, we've got matte paper, and matte paper uh, really is uh, the, uh, the least of all worlds. Uh, as you can see, I'm just gonna trace the outline there. Uh, it's only about a third of the total visible color space um, that actually is covered by it. Um, that's partly because matte paper, you're reflecting off the paper, and so there's only a certain amount of light available, and it's partly because of the way that ink technology works. Then, uh, at a slightly better level, though a different level, uh, is uh, sRGB. Now, sRGB is the colour space which your monitor usually inhabits. It, it, RGB stands for red, green, blue, as I'm sure you know, and sRGB is a, is a, a particular color space uh, in that. <clears throat> now, uh, when I say that, that your monitor can show that, uh, it's quite possible that it, it can, but it doesn't. And we'll come back to why that is when we talk about color profile in a minute. And then you've got a, a wider space, which is Adobe RGB, uh, and that's a different kind of red, green, blue, uh, which maps more color. But it also means there's more gaps between the colors in 8-bit. So most graphic files will be 8-bit, a very few will be 16-bit, so there's 8 bits for red, 1 to 2, 5, 6, 8 bits for green, 1 to 2, 5, 6, 8 bits for blue, 1 to 2, 5, 6, or in mono, it's uh, just 8 bits for the gradations of gray, 1 to 2, 5, 6. Now, if you do a gradient blend uh, and uh, look at it carefully, uh, that will come out in steps in most cases because the, the gaps are bigger in Adobe RGB. And then uh, we've got uh, the really big one, which is Pro Photo RGB, which you almost um, never see uh, out of anything but professional cameras uh, like a, a Nikon D810. And Profoto is almost always 16-bit color. So the reason that they dare to cover uh, a different spectrum uh, is because uh, they've actually got 16 bits per color, and so uh, there's more space. However, at some point, because your matte paper can't possibly uh, reproduce in, in that area, it can't possibly reproduce anything like the colors of Profoto RGB, those are gonna have to be crunched down uh, which means you're either going to lose some colors or you're going to compress some colors. Uh, so you might give the exact colors um, or you might give a perceptual uh, impression of those colors. So on a dull day, everything is less bright and the colors are less vivid. And if you take a perceptual kind of crunching down, uh, it's like on a dull day. Uh, and that's what we expect from paper. We don't expect paper to be as vivid as real life. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you're working with particular uh, exact product brand colors specified in Pantone, 
then uh, you might say, well, we, no, we want to go by the numbers and get it exactly the, the right thing. So there'll be fewer colours to display. But if the only colour you're displaying is a particular shade of orange, which is, is well within matte paper's gamut, then uh, it's not going to be a problem. Well, OK. Um, <clears throat> hopefully we've covered why uh, not all devices are equal. Basically, screen-based devices can show more because they show light coming through the screen. And uh, print-based things, like, well, basically paper, uh, shows you less colours because uh, there's no light coming through, it's only light bouncing off. <coughs> and, of course, as with the famous dress, the light bouncing off, uh, if it's from a, a different source or mixed sources, so incandescent uh, and uh, LED together, maybe a bit of daylight, uh, means that the colours again can change. Well, let's let's talk now about. Um, I want to talk about profile. So that's colour space. I hope you've got colour space. Is uh, the space in which the colours exist? How much of different kinds of colours can be shown? Now let's talk about uh, the actual workflow itself. So um, you've got these devices, and here on the left. Uh, you've got a Hasselblad camera, you've got a Nikon D810, you've got a, a, a little pocket camera, you've got an iPhone. Um, <clears throat> the, the big cameras have got ICC profiles. So, so that camera is profiled by the manufacturer. Uh, it may be that individual camera is profiled. And, and you can also take something like a, a, a spider or a colour monkey and profile your particular camera to get exact colour. Because that doesn't uh, take account of the fact that the, the lighting conditions will be quite different, and a small change in light changes the colour dramatically. So your eyes adjust to candlelight, or tungsten light, or daylight, or fluorescent light, but the camera can't adjust. So that's why you use white balance. Uh, and if you uh, set your white balance to manual, uh, and uh, then you um, uh, you try to take. Uh, a picture, you'll see that stuff taken by candlelight is orange. Uh, stuff taken uh, by uh, moonlight is blue, uh, and everything in between. Your uh, little cameras, so, so you're talking about your, um, your little Samsung here and your iPhone, uh, will probably have an sRGB profile, which is quite generic. They're, they're not usually colour matched. They can do white balancing, uh, but that's all. Um, your computer screen, unless you've actually profiled it, won't have a particular profile. So if you're working in Quark Express, I would say always get your monitor calibrated. Now, if you're working on a Mac, there's automatic software in the system settings to do that. But if you possibly can, get a Color Monkey uh, or another x right device or a Spider and, and profile that monitor, because that's the only way you're going to know that what you see is what you actually get. You've got scanners, and depending on the age, they might be sRGB, uh, they might be Adobe RGB, they might not be profiled at all. And then finally, you've got stuff coming out of the computer, for example, through Illustrator, which will probably be uh, Adobe RGB, but it'll be a screen profile. And you've got your screen profile over here, and your screen proofing. Um, and in Quark Express, if we go to uh, View and Proof Output, you can actually set different kinds of proofing uh, on a document. So if I'm going to proof that in RGB, uh, or I'm going to proof it in CMYK. Now, in fact, for these pictures, uh, it doesn't make much of a difference. But it can make quite a difference when you've got brand colours, which are out of gamma. And then where is it going to? Well, uh, if you're going to a laser jet, chances are that you've, you've not got that profile at all. It'll always come out quite funny. Uh, and then uh, if it's going to a, uh, a DocuPress or another um, digital press, so I've got one over here. Uh, this is actually, I think, an HP Indigo. Uh, then that will have its own profile, which is, is built in. You've got hexachrome devices, like these massive roll printers. And then you've got, uh, hopefully, profile, but not always, CMYK printing presses. Uh, and then finally, if you're going to be outputting as HTML5, which you can very easily do in Quark Express, you're going to someone's unprofiled uh, laptop or slightly profiled pad device, because they've been profiled a bit by the manufacturer, but they all differ individually. So what are we going to do? Well, uh, I've already shown you in Quark Express the proof output. So that's view proof output. And I would always work with that. And, and, and whatever your final output, I would, I would set it to that. But 
there's a little bit more we've got to do. So if you go to utilities, you can come down and see that it's got profile manager. And, and this really isn't going to do anything. I'm just showing it to you. Uh, you can turn some of the profiles off. But these are all the different profiles stored on my computer. Uh, I hope you can see that. Um, uh, and over here, we've got uh, five or six HP Color LaserJet CP5225N. Uh, F2, C4, D4. You don't need to remember that. That's, that's the, the name of my printer at home. And we spent uh, days profiling this printer with uh, a color monkey. Uh, and so that the results of what comes out of it vaguely match what's coming out of the computer. Because what I was finding was that everything was coming out a bit turquoise. Um, because the profiling that comes standard with a laser jet, and, and HP is a great printer, I almost always pick an HP, um, but the profiling that comes as standard is, is way off. Um, so, okay, I've got this profile, and I, I didn't bring this in through Quark, I brought this in through uh, uh, Color Monkey software, but it's now in the system software, uh, and the entire computer look, can look at that. Now, all this dialogue is doing is allowing me to turn off lots of things so they're not in the way. But let's now go to um, uh, Edit, Color Setups. Now you've got Source Setups and Output Setups. You don't need to play with the Source Setups. Uh, it, it allows you to take the Quark Express 7 default or Emulate Legacy, unless you're working with documents that were created in Quark Express 4.2 uh, or something. You don't need to bother with that because anything coming in will have its own profile. Those profiles are built in to the image that's sent through. But for output uh, color setups, uh, it's much more important. So I'm gonna go to output now. Now, I recently deleted all my preferences for the episode when we talked about preferences. I wanted to start with a blank sheet. And that unfortunately deletes um, all my output styles. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, um, uh, I'm gonna go uh, just down to new on here. And uh, I'm going to type uh, HP uh, LaserJet. And the mode, so I'll spell it correctly now, uh, the mode I want is composite because it doesn't do separations. Uh, and the model we're going to use is um, uh, CMYK. And now I'm going to pick this profile that I've got. Uh, and it's um, uh, HP uh, laser jet. Now, in fact, I actually call this one new toner because we replaced the toner with a different brand uh, and that meant we had to start again. Uh, so in, in terms of proof separation, I'm going to leave that and it says convert spot inks to process. Yes, I want to do that because the HP obviously can't print spot inks. Now, uh, all I've done now is created a default output setup for color. Now what I need to do uh, is uh, come down here and create an output style. And what I'm going to do, now you see all the different styles for PDFs. When you're working with PDF, all the profiles get passed through. You haven't got to think about them. Um, but if I'm going to print to my um, laser jet, uh, I need to specify a couple of things. So first I've got to do the PPD. Uh, and um, I'm going to color laser jet CP, um, uh, 5220 series, um, HP colors, yeah, CP5, uh, that's 5220 I've got, okay, uh, and uh, we'll call this laser jet, and now I'm going to come down to colors, uh, and I'm going to uh, take setup HP laser jet, and what this now means, I'm going to save that, if I now go to print, what I'll see is print style, I can take laser jet, and it, it picks the right printer, and if I come down to color, it's gonna print the setup HP laser jet. I could change that if I wanted to, but on that basis, when I print stuff out on my home laser jet, uh, it's not gonna come out in all the wrong colors. Now, um, I think we're gonna run out of time right now, so we'll, we'll stop there. We talked previously about uh, bad color when you've got a bad profile. Um, uh, I've got these images here and they've all been uh, in imported with the correct profile. I changed the profile to an incorrect one. This is the correct one uh, right at the bottom here. And, and they all kind of look fine until you start looking at them carefully. 
And when you look at them very carefully, they're all just a little bit different. Now you might say, well actually I prefer the, uh, I prefer the look of, uh, of this one to the correct one. Well that may be because your screen's not quite calibrated. It may be because it's been prepared for print. But um, if there's any problem at all, always go to a utilities usage and go to profiles and check what profiles are in use, which, which pictures have got that. You can actually get it to, uh, to show you that picture. Um, so there it is, that's found that one. That's been set to Profoto RGB, but it actually uh, shouldn't be that at all. So uh, what we then do is replace that, double click it, and we replace it with the correct one, which I think in this case is gonna be uh, Adobe RGB. And that's a decision I made when I saved the picture. So whatever the picture, um, uh, I'm going to cancel that now. Uh, whatever the picture ought to be, uh, make sure it is that. And if, if things are going funny, go back to the software in which you created, you downloaded the image, check that there is actually a profile attached to whatever software you're using, Capture One Pro or Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop, and then make sure that the profile in usage profiles is the same for that picture. If it's not, when you get to the final print, it will look wrong. Well, that is really a whistle-stop tour uh, of uh, profiles uh, and color spaces. So a color space is the space that inhabits the profile as a particular way that that device is a bit more green, a bit more red, a bit more blue, whatever, and which is, is sent with the image from the device to tell uh, Quark Express and everything else to adjust it a bit. Um, and uh, getting that right is crucial, but also calibrating your monitor, calibrating your print output, and making sure those profiles are put into Quark Express is again crucial. Well, this is Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. I'm Martin Turner. Uh, you can get the book of the same name from Amazon or your local bookshop. I hope you're enjoying this series. I look forward to seeing you next time.